Good morning to you. Thank you for taking some time out of your morning to join with us for what we like to call an hour of power. This is the Preterist Power Hour. Uh, this is our a weekly, a daily program. Sorry about that. Our daily program that we provide through the Power of Preterism Network, which you can learn more about by visiting powerofpreterism.com. I am Michael Miano. I get to be one of the co-hosts of this program. I also serve as the pastor of the Blue Point Bible Church and the director of the Power of Preterism Network. And it's my privilege to be here with my co-host this morning. Of course, as many of you already know, uh, by tuning in that we have a special guest with us this morning, Reese Maggard. We'll be letting him uh, share some thoughts in a moment here as we continue through the program for our Testimony Tuesday, if you will. Uh, Edward, good morning to you, brother. Uh, please go ahead and introduce yourself and lead us in a word of prayer, if you don't mind. Amen. Thank you, Pastor. My name is Edward Howell. I'm a member of the Blue Point Bible Church, also a board member of the Power Preterism Network, and it's, and it's an honor and privilege to have uh, Pastor Reese Maggard with us. Uh, now I would like to lead us in prayer. Heavenly Father, please go before us. I, I pray that, you know, what's presented today would be with clarity and um, proper focus, and it would be you know, allow people to discuss what's, what's, what we'll be sharing today, uh, give questions, uh, comments, and insight if they have uh, that we may be able to share. And that uh, in doing so, as far as sharing what will be discussed today, we'll, we'll develop in fellowship with one another, which is the purpose of gathering. And uh, Thank, thank the viewers and those that are listening uh, to the podcast that you will be blessed and empowered in Jesus name. Amen. Amen. Thank you, brother. Uh, you know, I'm excited for today. Uh, I don't know as, if it's the extra coffee caffeine that I'm drinking or if it's the uh, Holy Spirit or if it's just a good attitude that woke me up this morning uh, for a testimony Tuesday. So, Edward, if you don't mind, I just want to start out by just praising God for a couple of things. Uh, one thing, you know, I shared this quote from Tim Keller during our worship service at the Blue Point Bible Church this past Sunday, Sunday, and um, the quote, just to sort of paraphrase it, had to do with the influence of your social circle. You know, your social circle, the people you rub elbows with, have a lot to do with the things you grow in, the grace of God, the strength of God, the holiness of God. Uh, that has a lot to do with the people that you get the privilege to rub shoulders with. And I have to say, I just woke up with an abundance of appreci appreciation for my family, my biological family, my church family, uh, which I praised God for this past Sunday. For, you know, Jonathan Buttrey, our directors here for the Power of Preterism Network, you, Edward, of course, uh, which is included, of course, in the membership of the Blue Point Bible Church. And, uh, you know, just so many others, Reese Maggard being one of them, as you'll learn more as we go through the program today, uh, I had the privilege of being uh, rubbing shoulders with him, if you will, at the recent conference, the Rethinking the Resurrection conference, and also uh, on YouTube, you know, in the last, let's say, 72 hours, I've had the privilege of going through quite a few different videos that Reese Maggard helped me gain an interest in the uh, Primitive Baptist uh, you know, understanding. And uh, it was a video uh, due to him and Jonathan Buttrey uh, doing a video together explaining primitive Baptist universalism uh, that it inspired me to kind of go on this just rabbit trail, if you will, and uh, just do some research and, and learn a lot that I'll mention throughout today's program. And I was just very blessed. And I, you know, I don't know if it's spending my evening listening to that stuff and learning about the primitive Baptists and, uh, the, you know, the understanding through church history in the 19th century and uh, just really being blessed by that, that woke me up with this great appreciation. I don't know what it is, but brother, I'm blessed, you know, and I, I pray that you feel the same. And uh, I pray that each of us here tuned in, have an opportunity to rub shoulders, rub elbows, however we're phrasing it, uh, shake hands with uh, those that inspire us and empower us. And, uh, you know, so again, that's what we're moving in on here today. There's one other thing I want to share. Uh, you know, there's a text that's often mentioned to my, uh, my frustration. And Edward, you've heard me rant about this numerous times. Jeremiah chapter 29, verse 11. Now, in Jeremiah chapter 29, verse 11, the text reads, I'm just going to read to you the, the verse. Uh, for I know the plans I have for you, declares the Lord, plans to prosper you and not to harm you, plans to give you hope and a future. Now, this text is always cited in such a positive light. Matter of fact, 
my fiance this morning and I'm going to praise God for, uh, I get to rub shoulders and elbows with her too. And her son, you know, again, they have an influence on me. So again, social circle has so much to do with, uh, you know, those of you that are married and, and are blessed by your wife, you know, uh, the, or your husband for that matter, uh, praise God that, you know, you have that and, and praise God for that this morning. So the way that this verse is usually interpreted, Jer Jeremiah 29, 11, as was shared this morning, uh, my fiance shared this with me uh, in, in sort of an interpretation or a devotional was, you are stepping into a, cha a chapter of answered prayers, healing, miracles, change, and breakthroughs. The remaining days of April will be amazing for you and your family. Now, that's why I, this, frust this verse often frustrates me because it's used in such an optimistic you know, disregarding the reality of life, uh, you know, and disregarding the context of Jeremiah chapter 29, for that matter. And it's often taken way out of context. So it was actually on Reese Maggard's page uh, that I found a quote that, in my estimation, illustrates that text a bit more. And this is what it's really getting at here. Staying positive does not mean that things will turn out okay. Rather, it is knowing that you will be okay no matter how things turn out. Again, that's the optimism that the scriptures lead toward. That's the, the, the true hope that we have in God is that we'll be, we'll be okay no matter what's going on around us. Israel, in the context of Jeremiah 29, was being led into Babylonian captivity. And what is the Lord telling them? This is for your good. I'm shattering everything you know. I'm taking away everything you're comfortable with. I'm putting you in captivity. However, this is to your benefit. Trust me. And have faith that I am the God that is leading you in the things that will benefit you, that the failures and the strengths, the blessings and the, the woes, so to speak. So just really blessed by that. And I wanted to lift up praise in that regard this morning. And uh, Edward, I'm going to give you a moment to go ahead and share uh, any testimony Tuesday thoughts you might have. Well, I'm grateful for the Blue Point Bible Church and uh, the opportunity to be on the Putters Power Hour as a co-host because I'm meeting people that I would not have had the opportunity to meet, at, at least, you know, uh, on Zoom, where I can, you know, meet them face to face in, in that regard. And to get to hear <coughs> uh, perspectives, you know, from other individuals on their medical wisdom of God understanding. So it's always, it's been a blessing, you know, an encouragement. Amen. Yeah, look at us. We're able to go from New York to Kentucky to Colorado. We're all over the place. Uh, you know, um, we're in Rhode Island, you know, over there hanging out with Richard. Um, you know, we got a whole bunch of things going on here. So uh, praise God for that. So, uh, Edward, and I appreciate you, brother, and I appreciate your time. And I know many others often express the same uh, that, you know, they appreciate your desire, your diligence. And I'm sure you know that you're an inspiration more than you might think uh, in that regard. So thank you, brother. So I'm excited to bring Reese on. You know, let's uh, let's not uh, delay uh, the blessing that we have in front of us, and let's let Reese uh, kind of introduce himself here. Reese, good morning to you, brother, and thank you for taking some time out of your day to join with us. Uh, we thank you for listening to the program, being one of our faithful uh, listeners there. And uh, please let us know a little bit about yourself, um, if you don't mind. Lead in on a little bit about yourself right now, who you are, where you're from, and then tell us your your journey in Christ. And we'll ask more questions as we go along. Well, it's good to be with you and Edward uh, this morning. But um, I was born in Batesville, Indiana, and lived there till I was almost 16 years old. And then uh, my mom and dad moved back to Kentucky from where they were originally from. And then, uh, of course, that was a shock and a big change from Indiana to Kentucky. Then. Uh, it's pre it pretty rough, and I didn't like it too much. But, but now, after I got older, I, uh, Kentucky and Tennessee, I wouldn't live anywhere else. I just fell in love with it. But uh, I got married uh, when I was 18 in high school, and uh, my wife, uh, she was one month being 17. And I've got little grandchildren at that age, and I see them as babies, and I just wonder how we even made it. But I know it's by the grace of God, and you know, very shortly we had four children. And then when I was uh, 20 years old, like a month before, and matter of fact, I was at my mother-in-law's house, and the Spirit of the Lord just came over me, and it, it took me to my knees, and I hollered out, and here my mother-in-law and them all ran in there. 
uh, thinking that, you know, something had went wrong. Well, that spirit was so strong. My mother-in-law, uh, she never did it. from then on. Of course, she belonged to the, the old regular Baptist and, uh, I joined the old regular Baptist where I had a great grandfather that um, he was a minister 60 some years in it. And of course, that's where I wanted to go. And I joined that fellowship. And, and uh, the very first day after they baptized me, I kind of was already in trouble. They had a, like a dinner on the ground and all them old elders, you know, their gray hair. And I'm thinking, you know, that's the glory of God off from heaven, just shining down on them, you know, and that was a lot of my problem all through uh, from growing because I'd see things and I'd just say, you know, it was across to the scriptures, what they were saying. And I was seeing something different and I'd ask them, well, they'd tell me it's not that, well, no hell stuff that you're talking about. And, and of course they were supposed to be uh, uh, believing in sovereign grace and, uh, and a sovereign God. And they really didn't. It, it was that, that was that two, uh, uh, like it was in um, Israel, you know, in the days of Marion, I think it was Abdon or something like that. And they told him it was a mixed language and they couldn't speak the language of uh, Israel. Well, I think that's what that's really referred to. I was talking to Brother Jonathan last night. Uh, you know, they're in Galatians talking about that. Mm -hmm. And I think that's really what uh, goes in with that because they was trying to mix grace and law. Mm -hmm. So in that church there that I first joined, uh, it was established in 1820 and my, my great grandfather and he was moderator what they call the association. That's where all the churches come together, you know, once a year. Well, they were uh, supposedly out of the Roger Williams uh, uh, clan. And I don't know how much you know about Roger Williams who uh, he was ran out of Massachusetts for his, uh, he really wasn't uh, ran out based in whole over his universalism belief. It, it, he didn't believe in the Trinity mm. and they, they ran him out and uh, he went to Rhode Island and he was the first governor of Rhode Island and he was an old Baptist <laughs> minister, but he, you know, he preached sovereign grace and all that and uh, uh, universalism. And of course, you know how that goes. A lot of people don't like that for some reason, but somewhere down there, not too far after that universalism caught fire and, uh, they had to stomp it out. You know, it was kind of like Christ. We gotta, we gotta get rid of this. <laughs> he, he'll, he take over the world here if we keep letting him go. And, and I know in Indiana, uh, it, it it was really on fire there, and it was like the 1800s or something. I can't remember the date, but uh, you know, they they wasn't liking that, so they had to. They, it's kind of like it is today. Uh, if somebody say something. Well, you don't want to go over at that old no hell church and. Uh, mm -hmm. They don't believe in this and they don't believe in that. They don't believe in a resurrection. And, and I tell them, we're the only one believes in hell and we're the only one believes in resurrection. I said, yours is like buying uh, real estate in Arizona for the oceanfront property. Yours is always way over there and you don't never get it. And mm -hmm. you're missing it because it's here, you know? So uh, we, you know, I believe in a hell, but I believe it's here. Uh, the literal you know, hell about the burning, uh, like we said, you know, I told you the uh, mentioned in the conference that the scales that fell off of Paul's eyes was the pride. And that's what's got to fall off all of our eyes, pride. Mm -hmm. and, I, and I'm so thankful that in that conference, I, I didn't see that in, in none of them. There were seven elders there, I believe. And I didn't see that out of none of them in their, in their sermons. They, you know, it, and a lot of that conference is like what they call them associations. And it's all the churches, you know, they're out there competing to be the best singer and, and the best preacher. And I know more than you, you know, and, uh, uh to me, that's, that's, uh, but anything the way, what I was going to say there, you know, uh, the cares and the riches of the world, uh, it's, I, I can't, I can't remember the scriptures where it's at right now. It, 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 it that's the thorns and the thistles of the cares and the riches of the world. It's, it said that, mm -hmm. you know, and, uh, and I found out anywhere in the scriptures, if, if you f find something, it gives you the definition somewhere. And usually it's in the Old Testament, what they call the Old Testament. And, you know, a lot of, like I told you in the conference, a lot of people in this country don't even think you should. That's just, you know, throw it out. That, that's got no meaning at all. It's over with. But uh, there's, that's, uh, it's got so much, you know, to 
what we uh, are into this day, and that's what they were looking for and didn't even know it, most of them. But it's like this day too, you know, uh, it's to the called and the out called people. Uh, you just you just can't grasp this on your own. Uh, mm. And, you know, I started seeing stuff like, you know, first, uh, I bl always believed in an almighty God, you know, sovereign God from a little kid. But then I got into those people, you know, and then, like I said, they was preaching that mixture of grace and the law. And and that's why one thing, reason I enjoyed uh, Brother Glenn Hill's sermon so much, I was in that, just what he was in. You know, I was trying. Here I, I was on, uh, when the Lord first came to me, you know, that night for, I don't know how long. I, I was just in heaven on earth, you know. And uh I, I, I was done real good, but you know, you'd have these thoughts, uh, and even to, uh, uh, making a living for your family, you know, uh, that would, if all that stuff is true, like they say, you, you should be out there, uh, working for what they call working for the Lord every day. You know, how do you even stop and eat if, if somebody's going to go to hell because, uh, you know, you didn't testify to them or something, you know, that stuff didn't make sense to me. And, and like you, I really appreciated your opening there. Uh, people that I've been with, I've been with some of the greatest elders that ever was. I, I, and they are a, a, a mark to me, you know. But I've been with some bad ones that, you know, just on the other side. But sure. uh, I'd see those things. You know, I start seeing things in the scriptures that was across what they said. So I left that group of uh, regular Baptists and went to another one. And here you're preaching uh, uh, and God's putting you through this desert travel road that you're preaching that all things work together for good that love them and they're the called according to his purpose. Mm -hmm. Well, uh, I, I, you know, like you've probably seen, I see some of the stuff a lot different than most people now. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, they, they preach this, be born again, get born again, but get born again. I believe being born again is no different than the resurrection. That's right. Uh, and we start out as babes in this thing. This is a, a, a travel, a trial, and a journey. And it's for the out call. You know, and that's the difference in it that people don't see, you know, where we see that, you know, God is going to bring back all things unto himself. But in this world, uh, there is a first fruit as with of Christ. And his coming, I, I wish I could think of the scripture here, back in Zechariah or something. He said, uh, the writer there, every which one it was, he said, the Lord has been coming from everlasting. He's always been coming and he always will come. And, you know, and that's the thing, uh, like people don't understand. Uh, you just uh, don't go to sleep. Sleep's got to come to you. And that's the same way I believe with the kingdom. And I started finding out, you know, no matter how good that I thought I was doing, according to law, I would still be condemned, you know, and, and condemnation would come on. And, th and that's one of the script first scriptures that really helped me. It says, you know, therefore there now is no condemnation to those that are in Christ Jesus. And I believe there's a difference of being in him and out of him. And I, I believe when the spirit is not, uh, you know, moving and motivating us, I believe we go right back to that old flesh man, that old law gets back on us. And, and I believe that's what in Galatians, you know, that's an allegory, those two men. Then you get with Esau and Jacob. I believe that's an allegory between the outer and the inward man, you know, but then they come together, uh, you know, they take that scripture, you know, um, that it's after you leave here that mortality uh, must put on immortality and incorruptible uh, corruption. And I believe that's here when that spirit comes, mm -hmm. that that Jacob man is, you know, being brought out and uh, subdued and that being born again, I believe it's, you know, that's what the same thing, a resurrection. Uh, uh, you can't enter the kingdom unless you're born again. Well, we're not in the kingdom constantly and continuously. And that's what I got seeing, you know, and I, and it, to me, that's how it come together because uh, uh, I had one old elder one time, you know, he's talking about it. He said, yeah, that came to me one time and that spirit meant to me be born again and again and again and again. And that's like Paul, you know, uh, he died daily. So he had to be resurrected daily. Mm -hmm. And, 
until we're resurrected, that's like even the scriptures. Well, I, but when I first, you know, came in, it, I just couldn't get enough. I said, and then I loved it when I got laid off. That was one of the things of the mind, you know, you get laid off a lot or have a strike and you have to stay home. Well, I'd just read the Bible, you know, and just read it and read it and read it. Then I'd go to some of them elders and, and uh, you know, ask them, well, still, it's not that stuff you're trying to bring out to me. I said, I'm not bringing nothing out to you. I'm asking you a question, you know, tell me what it means. Cause I didn't know what it meant. And then I started seeing that things those way. Well, then I kind of seen, you know, I didn't know nothing about a preterist or the word preterist, but I got seeing, you know, that in, like in uh, Matthew, Mark and Luke, John, what they call the gospels, that something ain't right here. This, this is past. It's got to be past. Well, then I, uh, and even with the universalism, you know, it wouldn't work if that was for out here in the future, you know, before us. It just wouldn't work, especially some of them hell things, you know, Jesus throwing hell at them, uh, that, that, that wouldn't, wouldn't work. Well, then I found out there was a, what the word meant, you know, what I was seeing, that it was preterist, and I found uh, Don Preston's uh, page, and, well, that that was a lot of things was I started seeing, just like universalism and uh, sovereignty, you know, I'd run into those certain people, and that gave me hope and gave me strength because, you know, who am I? I'm seeing this in all these old white-headed men, you know, preaching it completely different. So, you know, that really satisfied me. And then after all that started to come together, uh, you know, I've been satisfied ever since. And I don't have all that uh, condemnation. I don't have all that guilt because, you know, uh, you're not going to be uh, uh, satisfied uh, with God by the law. No flesh will be justified by the works of the law. And they can't see that, you know, all they're bringing on themselves is condemnation and damnation, but trying to, you know, preach the law. And uh, if it is not by grace, then I'm lost. There's no hope for me. And I am what I am and I can't be nothing else. So, I, you know, that helped me. I, uh, you know, like Glenn Hill, uh, you know, I loved sports and played sports all the time back then. And here you get in this. Uh, and, and then they, you know, a lot of those, they wouldn't go to the ball game and they bring up people and exclude them, you know, for going to a ball game and, and television. Some of them, you know, you couldn't even watch television. And I, I got pretty deep in that stuff. You know, like I've said at this uh, conference, I was reading those scriptures really not to get uh, understanding. I was re reading it to prove that was right, you know, and then that stuff just would be a cross, you know, it just did, didn't come together. And so I've mentioned brother Jonathan last night, no it, uh, sister, she had a, son that uh, you know everybody else uh, in the old baptist he he went, went to the catholics well uh he was in i, I can't remember what the organization he was in but anyway he, he was well read and that's all he done was read 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 and mm -hmm. so I, and it was up in ohio and it was nothing to do for but for me to you know meet that son mm -hmm. well when she uh, when he left uh, she asked me what do you think of, of my son I said, you don't have to worry about him. She said, why? I said, you cannot read yourself out of this. You read yourself into it. Right. And, uh, and it wasn't but a few years later, he's their minister up there now. <laughs> ah, praise God. That's yeah. That's that's how a, a true pursuit of truth will work in your life. Right. You know? uh, if I may say a couple of things that uh, stood out to me, and Edward, of course, I want to encourage you to jump in. Um, you know, one of the things I appreciated about my time uh, spent with, uh, you know, the, the Holston Church there and at the conference, uh, as we mentioned, uh, Reese was a conference speaker at the Rethinking the Resurrection Conference. We do have an entire blog on our website, powerofpreterism.wordpress.com for the Rethinking the Resurrection Conference. And you can go right to the point where Reese had uh, started speaking. We're going to provide a link and a, a, a blog for this podcast as well uh, that'll have links for everyone to be able to tune in. However, uh, one of the things that I really appreciated coming out of that conference was sometimes the problem with titles. For example, uh, universalism. People hear universalism and they get the chills. At least I know some of my listeners do. Uh, and even myself, if I may be uh, you know, honest in that regard, um, because most people, when they hear universalism, they're thinking of Unitarian universalism, where the universalist thought is that you know, all religions lead to the same God. And, uh, you know, and where I might not necessarily say that, uh, and I never caught that message from the pulpit of Holston. Uh, you know, or any of the, the networking churches, for right. that matter. rather, 
uh, what the focal point would be would be that you know more of a uh, obviously ultimate reconciliation that you know God the, as you mentioned I'm going to play a clip here in a moment if you don't mind that I thought was very good and fruitful in my uh, listening and learning uh, and then I might play clips and ask you to maybe further comment you've made some great points already uh, but also uh, Edward I'm sure you noticed this. Uh, as Reese was talking, he highlighted the no hell comment. Now, uh, you know, we, we, we don't believe in what most people believe in as hell. Uh, we might qualify our understanding a bit different than, let's say, Reese does. Uh, but however, if you do this study through church history, uh, again, there's different veins of thought happening in the church history that all need to be considered, and all these thoughts should be brought up. One of the things I appreciate that uh, I'm glad you brought us back to the testimony thought, Reese, um, what I appreciated about learning about the primitive Baptists is this, uh, as um, a teacher that I learned a bit about last night uh, named Joshua Guthman, and I believe I'm pronouncing his last name correct. Uh, he's one of the teachers, the professing teacher or professor of history at Berea College in Kentucky. And uh, he has some great video teachings that I'll actually provide in a blog that I type up today uh, in regards to the primitive Baptist. And he gets in on this thing called the lonesome sound. Uh, and he says that one of the key things in the primitive Baptist understanding is being honest with life, being honest with despair, being honest with what we might call existential crisis and saying, you know, you know, hurt can be there. Hurt happens. It's realistic. And we need to consider it. We need to have doubts about things. We need to be realistic with our doubts. And Reese, you mentioned, you know, I guess you were a scriptural, rab scriptural rabble rouser, if you will, right from the very beginning uh, as you came into the faith. And I think that's beautiful, as uh, some might say that about me, uh, that, you know, the minute I got into the faith, I devoured the word and I began to say, well, this is what it says. And what are what are we taking serious? You know, what what why are you taking this part serious, but then missing out on the other greater truths or great truths that are over here? And uh, I'm glad to see that you're a fighter for consistency. And uh, Edward, I'm sure you could appreciate that. Um, Edward, do you have anything you want to say before I uh, ask any more questions of Reese? Okay, I just want him to reiterate one, one point about uh, the coming of the Lord, because I know he, he has many comings, uh, but, but, but we die daily, uh, we're resurrected daily, uh, we're renewed like the eagle and things of this right. nature. But uh, the distinctive part of 70, the year 70 AD, when the temple was destroyed and the city was destroyed, was distinct, was, is distinguished from any other of his comings. Uh, due to the fact that it 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 uh, is a fulfillment of Daniel's prophecy and all the prophetic prophecies that were speaking of the second coming and the end of the age. So I have just wanted to reiterate: uh, Does he feel that that's a distinctive uh, part of his coming that made it the second coming, or you know, how does he feel about that? Yeah, Reese, what do you think? Oh yeah, I, I understand that and believe that. It's just like the you know the Lord did in, and under the law, you know He brought in uh, people that's supposed to be uh, heathens, and they were His angels, and that's the same thing you know with Rome. Uh, he brought those in, and that was you know the desolation, of, and that was a completely different coming. That was to completely bring it to end of all those prophecies, mm -hmm. and then uh, that did that you know and ever and to ever link up. And that was where I got in trouble. You know, I, after I left old Ragglers, I was laid off and I was, I got into reading the seven feast. Well, if you start reading that, you know, and, uh, it's, uh, you know, I helped with, which was a lot of other, uh, elders was chosen to help Dorgan. And I brought him over from, from some friends who, who knew him that brought him to the old Ragglers. He wrote a history book about them. Well, that was one of the key things that, you know, that they was really scared of why they uh, chose people to, they didn't want us, <clears throat> you know, excuse me, the uh, tagged as uh, no hellers and, uh, uh, you know, that was what they scared of and make fun of them and mostly make fun of us, you know, because we, we really not no hellers and we're really not non resurrection as I mentioned before, we, we right. believe in a uh, hell and we believe in a resurrection, but we believe it in a different manner than them, but that coming in 70 AD and see, that's what you get into. If you start reading those things, then you start asking them, you know, think of that. Uh, 
as people, especially if you were a Jew, they're bringing in these what they called heathens, and God called them as angels to destroy, you know, to destroy them. And that's the same way 70 AD, because that was the purpose. And then I'll make a comment, and you, and you can go. Not only about his coming uh, was that prophesied, it was prophesied about the mystery. And if you get into Galatians, where Paul's talking about it, that mystery was to bring the whole world into this thing, in my understanding and belief about it. That's what he come, you know, uh, this great mystery that they didn't know God was bringing his whole family in so he can reconcile the world unto himself. And that, you know, appreciate what you said there. You know, it's not like the universalists and Unitarians, you know, how they preach everybody saved and all this stuff. Uh, like I said earlier, we believe, I believe in the first fruits. We're part of the first fruits of Christ. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, ye are Christ, Paul said, if you got him. And that's why I was made a comment about in him, being in him, and out of him is two completely different things. And if when we're in Christ, you know, that's when I think you can uh, understand the scriptures and they're revealed to you. And, uh, you know, that's the great thing about uh, revelations. It's the revelation of Jesus Christ. One, and the Perusia standing by you, he's with you. It's no longer, you know, looking out, outside and looking up in the sky as they did in uh, the book of Acts. You know, he had asked him, what are you gazing up there for? He's coming back in the same manner. Well, they tell you, well, he's coming out of the sky. That ain't the same way. That's completely opposite, you know. And, it, and some of that stuff, it's just common sense if you think about it. As, you know, we said when we read scriptures, they won't look at that, but they won't look at this other stuff, you know. So. <laughs> Amen. You know, I want to appreciate what you said there, because at the beginning, uh, and Edward, I'm sure that was an answer. I'll I will yes. let you give a moment I here. I hope I answered this question. Yeah, amen. Uh, I wanted to uh, highlight, as you mentioned in the beginning, in regards to your testimony, that the word preterist was never a phrase that, you know, you had come across, but rather, I'm imagining it was something like this. Then, uh, well, matter of fact, let me back up. Luke chapter 21, verse 20. But when you see Jerusalem surrounded by armies, then recognize that her desolation is near. Then those who are in Judea, must flee to the mountains, and those who are in the midst of the city must leave, and those who are in the country must not enter the city, because these are the days of vengeance, so that things which are written will be fulfilled. Again, that's what Reese was pointing out there, and it's not about the phrase preterism. Rather, it's about the truth and the consistency of the scriptures, and you know, Reese, I appreciate, uh, we notice a lot of times, Edward, with the testimonies that for me, for me, for example, I had learned of the word preterism, and that's what sent me into a sort of journey of what was a preterist, you know, what does this mean? Whereas many times we hear these testimonies of folks that saw consistency in the scriptures, and then began to, you know, obviously later on learn uh, the title for a preterist or something to that effect. Uh, Edward, what do you think? Yeah, I think what you said <laughs> uh, clarifies things. Amen. Amen. He's a preterist. That's it. Um, you know, again, seeing the value and the consistency as, you know, and Edward, one of the things I wanted to lean in on before was talking about the phrase idealist. Now, you know, uh, we deal with John Noe. We had Dr. John Noe on the program a couple of weeks ago. We had Dr. Lynn Hiles. Both of them would hold to more of an I. They're more comfortable with the idealist position. Uh, where they talk about the many comings than maybe you and I are. Uh, however, we agree with the, the, the foundation. We agree with, you know, the understanding that resurrection is a continued reality. All the while, we might make an argument about the resurrection of the dead being a specific historical event uh, that happened in AD 70. So there's so many different ways of saying these things that I've learned to be a bit less harsh on the distinctions and more qualifying of the agreement. Because uh, you know, if you do the study through church history, there's so much disagreement. And I'm actually working on a resource uh, that I'm going to be sharing and, and a study that I'm going to continue to lead here at the Blue Point Bible Church and online in regards to church history, where you see there's, you know, let's face it right now, if I was to say a phrase, all three of us, all six of us here live in this session, all, let's say maybe 12, 15 of us that are tuned in uh, through the Power of Preterism Network Facebook page, if I say one phrase, we'd all hear it a little bit differently. And we need to be comfortable with, you know, that understanding that we might phrase. And then the way we would repeat it, not only how are we going to hear it, but then the way that we're going to repeat it may come off with certain nuances that I think are important for all of us to consider. You know, I think that's a part of maturity, all the while knowing our foundation, where we find our foundation 
in the things of scripture, in Christ, and uh, allowing that to become nuanced as we, we mature. You know, uh, you know, don't touch the stove means a lot more to me now as an adult than it did when I was three. Uh, you know, now I, if I don't touch the stove, I don't eat uh, in the way that it meant for me when I was three. Uh, so, you know, I have to, I have to touch the stove, as you know, Edward, actually, sometimes you don't eat Edward, if I don't touch the yeah. stove. So, yes. <laughs> you know, yes. so, um, again, so hopefully we see, I, I just wanted to kind of, hopefully I'm, I, I'm not preaching to the choir here, but I, I hope that that's something that we really see the value in is, uh, that's where for me, you know, right away, let's, you know, Edward, let's be clear, you know, when I saw primitive Baptist universalist, I was like, uh oh, you know, and I know, as you know, as Reese knows, you know, many reached out to me and, you know, kind of discouraged that. And, uh, you know, for me, I've learned to look past things like that. I've learned to be mature and, and, and listen and understand what's actually being said, where I've listened to quite a few sermons from Holston PBU. And I'll tell you what, I, uh, I've listened to Reese Maggard uh, talk, and I'm going to share a video clip here in a moment. Um, I've been benefited. And I would trust that, you know, if you take the time and, the, you know, are willing to listen and have ears to hear and eyes to see, uh, that you will be blessed as well. If you guys don't mind, I just want to share a couple clips here uh, that I was benefited by uh, in regards to a video that Reese had done. Is that cool? Amen. All right. Give me one second to throw that up on the screen, and it'll lead us into further discussion, much of which Reese has already mentioned, so uh, we won't have to repeat the points, but I just thought it was good to let you hear uh, some of the things that were mentioned in this video. These discussions. Everything came from God and everything's going back to God, don't matter what it is. It has its source in God, it's got its uh, head in God, it's got its being in God, no matter what it is. So just like, uh, you know, a human being, when he leaves this world, uh, the scripture says the body goes back to the dust and the spirit back to God. So that's kind of universal right there, you know. Hell, to me, is just like heaven. It, it's, a, it's a state. It's, it's, it's a... It's not a pl literal place, it's a state. And you know, when, when you're lifted up in ecstasy here, you know, and that's like rapture. There's, there's no scriptures in the Bible teaching a rapture. Men take that, you know, as uh, that way. But you know, when rapture is just a lifting up and that's what it is. But hell is, uh, or the torment of it, the fire is, is God. The scripture teaches that God is a consuming fire and he, that fire, some way, somehow, he punishes you, man, for his deeds. And he, he plainly tells us that we'll pay for everything. You know, we, you know, they take that because we believe that. If I may just make an insertion here, uh, there's one thing that stood out to me that I find, uh, two things, the whole thing, for that matter, that I found very valuable. Um, you know, what, what Reese is explaining, obviously, that he highlighted that the rapture, for example, is not something that what we're reading in 1 Thessalonians 4 is not something that uh, has to do with a, a place somewhere else. But rather, as we've talked about, Edward, when we look at 1 Thessalonians 4, it's to be with the Lord, the presence of the Lord. And so shall they be with the Lord forever. That is not something we're waiting to go to. That's something we're living in. And I appreciate that Reese had highlighted that reality there. And then also, of course, in regards to hell. A uh, hell being a state of mind. There's, as Christ said, he said, those who don't believe in me are condemned already. Uh, it's not something that they're going to go to. It's something they're living in. And uh, th that's where I appreciate that Reese had highlighted before, uh, you know, two things, actually, out called, uh, talking about, you know, that's the goal of the church or those that are called out of the world. And uh, then, of course, he highlighted uh, being in Christ and being out of Christ, where uh, these are realities that we experience right now. They're not something we're waiting to be judged on, to spend an eternal state in, but rather a state right now. So, uh, Reese, thank you, and I appreciate that thought. I did want to play one last clip here and then ask you a question, uh, make a comment and a question about some of the things that you uh, share in this next portion here about uh, hell. Christ died for us and he's going to reconcile all back to him, that there's no punishment and that you can do, you know, that's the first thing they throw at you. Well, if I believed that, I'd do anything I wanted to. But see, that's showing you that they think they're getting paid, paid for being good. You know, I'm going to go to heaven because I don't drink or I don't run with women or I go to church and I give, you know, it's kind of like that uh, Pharisee's prayer, you know. I thank God I'm not like other men. I give 10% and 
I don't do this. I'm not like old poor homeless man. I, I work for a living, you know. It's, it's, it's to me, they, and that's why a lot of it, and that's why they get so mad, I think, too, you know. What's so bad if God is going to save everybody? Why do they get so mad? And, and you know, and then they, and they hate you. A lot of them will hate you with vengeance. People that you thought were friends, I mean, they will turn on you. Family will turn on you. We're both working from home. YouTube said that's enough on that clip. So let me go ahead and uh, stop that for a moment there. Uh, now, uh, what I wanted to highlight, and I appreciate, by the way, uh, is that oftentimes in regards to, obviously, you've experienced this with the universalist thought, but I've even experienced that conversation with preterist thought, where people will say something like, well, if everybody's been judged now, if every judgment is done and they don't have this event to fear and God isn't going to come in his anger and, you know, bring wrath to the world, then why should I be good? Why should I bother living for Christ? And that that, that baffles me. And it's clear that it baffles you as well, because it reeks of the Pharisaic spirit that, you know, and I wanted to give you a moment, if you don't mind, to kind of speak to that and, and, and encourage us. Why did you know, why did you feel that that was important to highlight? as you were talking about the universalist thought? Well, one, you know, they, they talk about judgment. Um, Solomon said that uh, judgment, he saw it, and it was under the sun. And then, you know, Christ talks about the judgment. And uh, plus, I think, you know, we live in judgment. Hmm. And two, if God has intervened in your life, you desire to please him because you love right. him. He That's first right. loved us and he gives us that love and you love everybody. I mean, I, I had an uh, elder to who's in the, what I guess they would call two seed and from the Baptist ranks, you know, that election, you know, you, if you're an Esau, you're going to hell after life. And if you're Jacob, you're going to heaven, you know, well, he, he was trying to get me to come and join in with them and, and their people. And he said, you know, you pretty well see everything the way we do, except that universalist. He said, you still believe that? I said, yes, I believe that as much as my, you know, uh, God first coming to me and born, born of me again, you know, the first time. And he said, well, if you could get rid of that, I said, I couldn't get no rid of that no more than I could that God saved me because I was born again in that. I, I was up on my mother and dad lived up on a mountain mile off the hill and i was up there one day uh, just musing around and this spirit you know that was before, that was when i was just studying in universal and, and i i couldn't hardly swallow that no hell stuff you know too because i that, i was born and raised in that and heard it all my life and that's uh, a lot of you know people they don't really know how much they're indoctrinated with the world and the things of the world mm -hmm. but that spirit baptized me that day just like the spirit did the night that he first came and uh you know give me a hope in christ and i i loved everything and everybody you know i get back in my flesh i don't like a lot of people and i don't like what they do you know sometimes i could smack the, you know right out of them but <laughs> you know get christ gives you this hope and this love for everybody and you know and that's the thing that that i love about that uh you know uh, that mystery and it coming together there's no more jew there's no more greek barbarian black white we're all one in christ jesus in his body and everybody's got a place there amen amen you know um one of the things i have to appreciate about you reese is is your your humility and your authenticity uh that's something that i value about you and i'm sorry to hear i have to say i'm sorry to hear about the friends and family members that have turned their back on being blessed uh, you know, I, I want to, you know, encourage you in that. I want to encourage you to continue being uh, the witness that you have been. And, uh, you know, I'm very grateful for that. Uh, one thing I wanted to ask you, uh, and uh, this is kind of off the cuff here. Are you familiar with the name that I mentioned before, Joshua Guthman? No, I, I may have years ago because I knew that there was a guy that taught that. And then a matter of fact, um, you know, what way Brother Jonathan's been putting our stuff out there on YouTube and stuff. There was a guy from West Virginia, and I can't think of his name right now, but uh, he, he contacted me, and he preached, or not preached, but he taught it at the University of, of Pikeville, but he, and he's wrote several books, and I wanted to get a hold of him and get some of his books, but uh, he, he does the same thing, but I 
that, that Berea College does a lot, you know, they uh, even come around and old regulars and stuff. But I, I'd heard of him because I had listened to a lot of those that they'd done in old regular Baptist. Uh, for one, especially for one old elder that I really loved, it was in the old regular Baptist, and uh, but they do a lot of that stuff down there. All right, amen. Yeah, I was going to ask if you heard of Berea College, so obviously you have. Oh, yeah. And um, you know, it seems like a very good school. No, I'm not doing an infomercial here, uh, but I do think that there's some benefit to it, and um, I know I'm going to be digging into those resources. I will be sharing, matter of fact, a link. Uh, so, Reese, when you see the update for this uh, program, I'll be sharing a link uh, for John, uh, for Joshua Guthman's uh, resources there if you're interested to avail yourself to that. And, of course, those of you that are tuned in to learn a little bit more. Uh, he did highlight something that I found interesting about music. Uh, apparently, music is a, a big, significant thing. Again, I've caught from what you're saying here about the spirit and that conviction that the spirit caused in your life, that there is a a definite uh, strong undertone of spirituality and emotionalism found within the uh, regular Baptist or primitive Baptist group. Oh, yeah. Yes. Hmm. Again, very interesting stuff. I appreciate uh, that, Edward. Uh, unless you have any more questions or comments, I'll go ahead and unmute some mics uh, for us to uh, welcome some discussion. Fast comment. Um, I was just thinking of, you know, faith, you know, total confidence in God. And also that uh, we got in the faith. Um, Jesus is the door. Uh, uh, you have to go through the door and trying to come up any other way is, you know, being a thief and a robber. And then I had wanted to mention about uh, what he had mentioned in the first clip about uh, uh, when you die, the body goes to dust and then the spirit goes to be with God. Um, not not everyone has the spirit of God, you know, but those that are chosen, I be, this is what I believe to whereas, you know, you don't want to give something to someone that, that they don't have as far as, you know, uh, the resurrecting spirit, you know, because you have to get it through, through Jesus Christ, the comforter that he had sent, you know, by having trust and believing in him, because he, Jesus said, you know, about believing in him and First John, rather in John three sixteen, you know. So you know by believing in Him, you you receive that that resurrecting spirit, you know. Because if you don't have the resurrecting spirit, you know you can't. When you when the body dies, you're totally totally separated from God, you know. If you have not that spirit, this is what I mean. Well, amen. And Edward, if you don't mind, and if you don't mind, Reese, I want to jump in there. And this is an interesting conversation and thought process that I've been developing as I've been listening to some resources about the primitive Baptists, because this conversation was very important to them uh, back in the 19th century, where let's say a text like John 316, John 316, Jesus is talking to whom? Believers. And Jesus is saying to believers for the, you know, God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son, that whosoever believes in him shall not perish but have eternal life. Now, remember, Jesus is talking to believers. Why? Because he's telling believers the promise of trusting in Jesus Christ. What he's not doing, and this is what the primitive Baptists in the early 19th century, uh, as Joshua Guthman teaches, uh, were highlighting, was what Jesus is not doing is using that as an evangelistic call. This is not something that we should be getting up, you know, unfortunately, that's what the big divide in the Baptist congregations early on was, and the old Baptist uh, view there was that if we believe in sovereign grace, then we can preach a gospel where God is preaching to his people conviction and trust and love, rather than making this an evangelistic call to the world, uh, rather than making it that people need to choose Jesus. No, you don't choose Jesus. Jesus chooses you. We love him because he first loved us. So, you know, again, uh, I think there's a conversation that needs to be developed uh, in, in this regard, which again was already developed in the 19th century. So I encourage you, Edward, in response to that, uh, and uh, Reese, if you're interested to respond as well, uh, I'd encourage all of us to lean in on a study of what was being said in the 19th century primitive Baptist congregations in regards to sovereign grace, in regards to what many of us might call Calvinism, and uh, you know, to see that sort of detail there. Reese, did you have anything you wanted to respond to in that regard? Oh, yeah, I just the other day, I can't even remember who I was talking to. Uh, I made that same comment to him. Uh, there's places, you know, even with Paul uh, and his letter stuff, he's not, and, and even using the word all, he's not talking about all men in those mm -hmm. places. And, you know, and there's some 
old Baptists understand that and see that. But uh, in that call and in that place where he's talking, and there's a lot of places he's not talking about the whole world, but then there's a lot of places that he is that those Baptists won't, you know, receive that. They'll still say he's talking about, you know, his, who he chose before the foundation of the world. Hmm. Again, I believe that's a good evolving conversation that I'd like to have and host maybe at some time. Uh, I don't intend to necessarily get into the nitty gritty of that today. As many of us know, it's a rather exhaustive conversation uh, to talk about. Matter of fact, you know, uh, just this morning uh, to highlight some church history resources that I've been looking at um, in the reformed community, for example, most people are very okay. They're okay with using Augustine as a resource for, you know, Calvinistic sovereign grace thought. How and what they accuse people of is if they use, let's say, um, thought by someone like, um, oh, it's not coming to me right now, the, the exact name. Uh, however, there's an op opposing thought in the early church in regards to, like, let's say, an Arminian type of thinking. Uh, and we see that early on. And what ends up happening is um, the reform community is kind of hinged upon Augustine. But if we do that, then you have to take Augustine's understanding of ecclesiology. Uh, because that's what the accusation oftentimes is against uh, the other writer. I'm forgetting right now. I'll share the quote later. Um, that if you follow that theology, it leads you to Catholicism. Well, yes, but then Augustine would do the, just very much the same. So the point being that there's so much disagreement in church history in the nuances that we need to become, you know, comfortable with doing reinvestigation, with constantly, again, not allowing our tradition to be the leading the leading thing to be our, our understanding even to be the leading thing, but rather the constant urge towards scripture. And Reese, that's what I appreciate about you. I appreciate about Jonathan. I appreciate about uh, many. Uh, thank you, Zach. Yes, Pelagius. That's another, uh, the Pelagianist, uh, Pelagianism and that early thought, I'm probably saying it horrible. Uh, however, I'll unmute mics here in a moment. Um, and uh, that thought in the early church, but I'm going to be putting together a resource in that regard for everyone. So you'll be benefited by that. But Reese, my, uh, my, my thought would be that, you know, fellowshipping with everyone that we fellowshiped with, I found that the foundation to be focused on Christ, to be focused on the scriptures, to be focused on the sovereign grace of God. And, uh, you know, uh, the way I understood universalism, if you listen to the sermons from Holston, if you meet the, the gentlemen there, uh, you know, the brothers and sisters that are there, you don't catch this the way that I understood universalism tone. You catch rather a sovereign grace tone and an understanding that God truly holds all things in his hands. So let's trust him and let every man be a liar. Let's, you know, use his source of him as the foundation and uh, let our thoughts kind of go by the wayside. So uh, I'm blessed in that regard. Anything else, Edward, before I unmute some mics? No, I'm anxious to hear some uh, thoughts. All right, cool. So I'm unmuting some mics. Uh, Zach, you, you have an unmute if you want to jump in here. Richard, uh, of course, and Vicki, uh, if you want to jump in, feel welcome. Of course, we always open up time for questions, comments, concerns, uh, you know, and, and anything else. So please feel free. If not, We'll go ahead and offer Reese the opportunity to uh, to uh, listen to share some last thoughts, and then uh, close out the program. Vicky, I see you're unmuted. You have something you want to share? I have no comments, but I'm just listening. Okay, you're here just listening. Thank you for letting us know. All right, Richard, I see you're unmuted. You want to jump in and have some comments, questions, concerns? Yeah, no, I enjoyed listening to Reese. Um, I've run into you know, all these different arguments that people, you know, are becoming terribly upset to hear that uh, somebody might not be going to hell that they feel should go there, you know? And I mean, they really get upset about this. Um, it, it's just, but then I was there. I, you know, I was raised in that. Uh, so I was there. Uh, so, you, you know, we all have to learn to just be patient with everyone's growth, you know, and realize we're all growing. And, and you could be on one you know, level on one particular subject and I might be on a higher level. And you know, we, we, on another subject would be totally different. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. So we, we really, it, it takes, the only thing that I ask, I ask in, in prayer a lot, I ask God, why does it take so long? Mm -hmm. You know, why does it take so long for us to see things? I mean, we, we go for years, decades, you know, sometimes before we can see something. 
and and you know but i'm just trusting the wisdom of god on on that whole process um i really um I, i've never heard of this primitive baptist uh church is, is that um and you mentioned Rhode Island, which really surprised me because a lot of people don't even know where it is. You know, <laughs> this little the smallest state in the union here, you can literally drive through it in a very short period of time. Uh, and everything is 15 minutes away in most mm. areas, which is uh, very important to me. <laughs> uh, anyhow, uh, do you know if there's any primitive Baptists here in Rhode Island, uh, Reese? I, I don't know uh, if they are or not, but um, Rhode Island and, and, and you'd be surprised too in New York, it was they were full of primitive baptists back in the 1800s and until after the civil war uh, but now i don't know hmm. i could do I'll some to church. jonathan buttry might know uh, a little bit more i know he's been doing a lot of digging and also i reached out to uh, joshua guthman uh so i'm kind of doing some research of my own richard so i'll let you know what i come up with as well okay that's all i had to say thanks all right thank hey. you Rich. Thank you. Sorry to cut you off, Richard. Um, thank you for uh, all of you being here. And of course, I, I am doing some digging in that regard. I wanted to, uh, I'm encouraged by it. I'm encouraged by the thought that, you know, uh, even here, for example, at Blue Point Bible Church, uh, we are, we come from peculiar Baptist foundations, which, uh, a matter of fact, I believe rubbed shoulders with uh, primitive Baptists. Uh, there's some similar inklings here and there, Sovereign Grace, of course, Um the women here uh, that started this church definitely had thoughts against the Civil War, which uh, from my study, I, I see a lot of that happening within the primitive Baptist circles as well. Uh, and, um, you know, challenging the current thought uh, that was happening there in the South in some regards. Uh, so, again, some interesting stuff to really look into. Two things I wanted to highlight. Uh, and then, Reese, if you want to share any last thoughts with us. Um, Richard mentioned being patient, and I, I want to, uh, you know, I really want to highlight that if we trust in the sovereign grace of God, not only should we be patient with ourselves, be patient with other people, be patient with the situation we might find ourselves in to bring ourselves back to that Jeremiah 29, 11 thought that we mentioned right at the very beginning, and to trust God, to truly be, you know, patience demonstrates a trust in God. That's why it's one of the fruits of the spirit. That's why it's one of the things we are called to grow in and possess. And I believe that's necessary. Uh, also, speaking about necessary, something that Reese highlighted at the beginning, and I want to kind of conclude on here uh, in my regard, would be uh, the necessity of approved teachers, right? We praise God for that. But then also the necessity for unapproved teachers. Reese had mentioned how, you know, if he didn't have these teachers in his life, these men and women that kind of challenged him in uh, the traditional church there in regards to law and grace, he wouldn't have continued to grow or he would have, but these are necessary experiences to have in our growth that we would rub shoulders with unapproved and approved teachers in that regard. That being said, I have an unapproved teacher uh, commenting on our uh, session here, uh, Steve Whitset, for example, if you want to go ahead and listen to some of his stuff that he's been uh, doing, go ahead and avail yourself. However, Steve Whitset said that, uh, and this comment illustrates my problem with him and my problem with him commenting in our program sometimes, uh, as he says, universal reconciliation, Christ's atonement was for all humanity, and at the resurrection, all humanity will be reunited with Christ for an eternity in heaven. He said, Wikipedia is wrong. And the laughing stock of this is the fact that yes, Wiki, believe it or not, folks, Wikipedia can be wrong. Why? Because Wikipedia is created by men and women like us that can be wrong, just like men and women in the early church, just like men and women in the latter day church, us right now. So, uh, you know, hopefully that answers that comment there. Uh, Reese, do you have anything you want to say in some closing thoughts? or uh, even in response to some of what I just said? Well, uh, what you just said there, uh, as you know, I'll, I'll mention this and give it a plug. Uh, as I was talking about, I was helping uh, Professor Dorgan. That's the book is called In the Hands of a Happy God. And mm -hmm. I got him over around our people. And as I say, I was helping him. And uh, all through there, you'll see some stuff. But then at the end, they talk about this guy getting excluded. That was me. They, they, they threw me out for being a non-resurrectionist. Well, this goes to Richard's uh, uh, thought. As we grow, you know, it, it, everything in scripture is, is, is uh, parabolized and all that other stuff and uh, resembled as, you know, farming and uh, growing and stuff. 
Well, you get into that state of a teenager in the state of the teenager in Christ, you know, there's a lot of them and that's what happened over there. It was a wonderful place. We had all these old elders and stuff and they died out. Then you started to get these young people in there. They didn't believe in the sovereignty of God. And every time I'd go to meet and I'd have to try to prove to them, you know, the sovereignty of God. They And that was really the thing that got it. They just knew that non-resurrection would get me thrown out. Well, they're the ones that done all that and agitated that. And they was, as, as I uh, symbolize it as, teenagers. They got, they was at the point, I, you know, I know because I've been there. And that's why you can't judge all this stuff. I've been there. I've done that. I've fought that, you know. But they thought they knew it all. And then, and then like I say, jealousy came in and a lot of that with uh, Dorgan uh, writing that book and a few people getting highlighted and they wasn't getting their attention, you know. But uh, anyway, to finish this off with the last thought of, to, with Richard, there, was, there has been scriptures that I have studied on. I knew that it was deeper than that, you know, what I was getting out of just reading it with my uh, natural mind. And... Uh, you know, and this, this happened uh, watching TV, you know, here it comes. That scripture just comes in my mind and answers it. I've listened to people on the radio or television, a scripture I've been, you know, studying on. Boom. They're preaching just the complete opposite. And here I'm hearing a whole different thing, you know. Well, that, that's, you know, I think where Christ uh, uh, give them inspiration in writing, you know, in one place, he says, you know, all things. Well, when that spirit's on you, you feel like you know all things. Hmm. And then, you know, uh, there's other places, he, uh, the writer, whoever it is, Paul, or most of the time, you know, you know these things. I, I believe in a knowledge. I don't believe in this. Oh, I don't know, uh, you know. But uh, what gets me, you get into that and you tell them, I know this. God's gave me that. That is the answer because God gave it to me. Well, they don't know nothing about these scriptures about here but they can tell you everything about being over there, how old you're going to be and what you look yeah. like. And, yeah. you know, they, they got completely opposite. And that's pretty well when you get into the religious world, everything's opposite. You know, if you turn around uh, and go the other way, you probably see, start seeing things come into focus, you know. Mm -hmm. Amen. Amen. Anything you want to say, Edward? I just wanted to say, like you had mentioned, patience. And in developing uh, maturity requires a process. That's so right. it goes back to what uh, Richard had said about sometimes it takes long. Many a times it takes long because you're going through a process. That's right. You know? That's right. And in maturity, it takes time and it's, you know, a process. That's right. Trust the process, right? Trust the yeah. process. Uh, praise be to God. Well, uh, Reese, I know we uh, mentioned that you... Uh, that you spoke at the conference. We mentioned some resources that we're gonna post in that regard. Is there any way that we can uh, encourage folks to get in contact with you outside of Facebook or uh, maybe the way that they could rub shoulders with you like a congregation? Uh, where can people find you? Well, uh, well I can give them my email. Uh, okay, that'd be great. There. It's, it's Reese, R-E-E-C-E, -E, maggard at yahoo.com. All right. And you're down there in Kentucky. So hopefully uh, if anybody's interested in learning more and you want to have a conversation and learn from and fellowship with Reese, get in touch with them through email, find them on Facebook. And uh, of course, uh, I know you're a part of the networking churches there with Jonathan Buttry in regards to the Primitive Baptist Universalist view. Right. All right. I'll give you this last thought. You know, that uh, when they threw me out there, because it was such a wonderful joy, the first, uh, it, I'd been in it 10 years. When they, th they threw me out over, you know, some of them, non it killed me. I mean, it just took me to the bottom. And I went through a lot of hell over that, you know, because it just killed, it wasn't some, it had nothing to do with cause some little boy rose up and, you know, against me. I've been through that the whole 46 years, you know, mm -hmm. and even through my family, but it was what it did to the congregation. And I wanted to make that comment while, uh, while ago. The old Baptists and primitive Baptists, they never get so small that they can't split. It mm. can be one little thing, you know, and, that, and if you get in a church of crisis, most of that's just one little thing that they're different in. And you've got all these churches. Why? You know, but most of the time it comes because somebody wants to be king. Yeah. But, but in that journey uh, in that, through that hell and that desert, I come among these other primitive Baptist people that, 
you know, I'd heard of them right there at the end, and, and that congregation was throwing always throwing off them, kind of. Like, and I told them, I said, "You're you're done to them, uh, what the world does to you, you know, calling you this and that." But I'd not be where I'm at, even in preterism and and all the other stuff, if I hadn't have went through that journey. Hmm, that's right. Amen. That's right. Amen. Well, yeah. Thanks, can Toby. I add one thing? Yes, you may. Please, please go ahead. Yeah, uh, he just reminded me of a state. I don't know where I heard this, but one man one day said, um, "All you need for churches to grow is a resentment and a Bible." <laughs> <laughs> you know. Somebody gets a resentment out the door, they go with their Bible and there's another church starting down the street, you know, uh, and I always laughed at that and, and, and find it funny to this day, you know, a resentment and you study most churches and you, you look at their history and you're going to find there was a resentment. <laughs> there was a resentment way back then that prompted them to start another, you know, group. Uh, and so, you know, that, it's kind of funny, but I think it's a lot of truth to that. Thanks. Amen. Praise be to God, the sovereign grace and the, uh, you know, the truth of God is far bigger than the minds of men, right. uh, you know, amen. Praise be to God. Uh, well, thank you, gentlemen, for uh, the session this morning. I, I pray that everyone was edified by our time together. And Reese, if you don't mind, uh, I'm going to ask you to close us out in a word of prayer. Okay. I just want to say I really enjoyed this, uh, Brother Mike, and uh, I was really uh, kind of worried about because I, I had to get Brother Jonathan last night to help me hook up on zoom i've never done that and, oh, and, nice. but it, 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 i enjoyed it it went well i think for me uh, for, absolutely about, did. Yes, uh, thank you. see that we would have thought you were a pro at zoom <laughs> 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 thank you brother i appreciate your time today as well thank you for being with us thank you for having me uh, heavenly father god of heaven and earth we give thanks for what you've given us we give thanks for all that you've given us contact with and, and you've made us love them, us love them as brethren. And that's what they are because we're all one in Christ. We thank you for the food we have and all that we got. We're blessed. I hope you continue to bless us and our nation. Bless our people and bless the people of the world everywhere. The world's universal, God, because we know that you love them as well as you love us. We thank you for that love. We thank you for your mercies and your grace. And we give this thanks in Christ for all that you've given us. Christ, we pray. Amen. Amen. Thank you, brother. Go in peace. And there will be a blog posted. And we'll be here again tomorrow at 11 a.m. Right. Thanks. Good night. Amen.